Hello, today we want to talk about cameras. Now cameras are huge. Everybody has got a camera on their smartphone. You've got one, I've got one, but I've got several. I have four on the back of my phone and I'm currently recording this video with my smartphone right now. Everybody loves cameras these days. Even the people who hardly use them on their phones. You see people on social media asking for phone advice and they be like, uh, I need a phone with the following requirements. Top of the list, usually is a good camera and in this camera craze that we are now in lots of companies are cashing in on it and they are trying to market phones you know based on camera this camera that pixel this pixel that and all these technical mumbo jumbo has got a lot of people confused because why unfortunately many of us are ignorant about how cameras work and this is why it's easy for companies to package stuff together and you know market it for the audience and then people rush and buy and then they end up you know getting and um, not exactly their money's worth right so uh my name is jeffrey and today i'm going to be explaining how cameras work what are they made of and you know how these parts fit together so you're welcome to inquisitive universe let's go smartphone cameras are made up of three parts you've got the aperture lenses and an image sensor so these are the three parts of a phone I'll say them again aperture is the first secondly lenses and thirdly image sensors now, what is an aperture? An aperture is the hole in front of a camera. It's where, you know, light gets into the camera. The aperture has basically just one function and one function alone to let light into your camera. So the bigger the aperture, the more light gets to your camera. The smaller the aperture, the less light is going to get to your camera. Now, the sizes are not just for letting in, you know, light alone or determine the amount of light that is going to get into your camera alone. It also acts, you know, for what is called depth of field or portrait effect or bokeh effect, depending on whichever phone you use or whichever blogs you read. Personally, I tend to call it the depth of field effect. I think that's what most uh, professionals in the field would call it. Now, the depth of field effect is what happens when you can see that I am in focus and the laptop behind me is kind of blurred out. You can't really see what's written on it. I mean, of course, you can see it's white and orange, but it's a bit blurred out. Depth of field effect is when the subject stands out in a photograph uh, whilst the background is blurred out. So that's what you call depth of field. Now, the bigger your aperture size, the more depth of field you get. But the smaller your aperture size, you tend to get next to no depth of field at all. Up, we have the lenses. Now, the lenses actually sit behind the aperture. A lens can be defined as a piece, as a piece of uh, optical glass or plastic that is able to take light from the aperture and then focus it on the image sensor. That's the main job the, of the lenses now, so to speak. The lenses 
determine the function of a camera. There are several types of lenses that are used on smartphones and these determine the camera's function and they give the camera its name as well. So you can put a, a wide sensor, that's the one we use for the main cameras. That one takes, you know, significantly wide angle of whatever, you know, image you want to capture. You also have the ultra wide lenses. They capture really, really wide area. And then you also have your telephoto. They tend to make, um, distant objects closer when you try to you know, snap distant objects and not get as far away when you take it and then use a telephoto zoom camera the object appears closer and then you also have what you call your macro lenses macro lenses are used for taking tiny objects and then making them look really big those are also macro then you also have a combination of a telephoto and a macro lens combined together and i think that one helps to take even better photos of really really smaller objects so that's it for the lenses finally you have the image sensor now the image sensor is the for me it's the most important part of a camera this is what determines you know a lot of how uh, your picture is going to come out, is going to look like, it's going to determine the resolution, that's the sharpness and clarity of your photo, it's going to determine, you know, overall how much color is captured, many other stuff about how your camera is going to come out looking like. So the image sensor is an electronic plate inside the mother's little integrated circuit motherboard that sits at the back of your camera. So its job is to, you know, take the light that passes through the aperture, you know, to the lenses and then to itself and then convert this light into electrical signals. Light is very important for photography because without light, you won't get any picture or any video. As I'm sitting right here, I've got a light coming from this side and I've got another one coming from this side and I have another one above my head. Now for you to be able to see me, light is actually bouncing off my body straight into the camera now if there was no light the picture is going to be not so very good as you can't really see me as clearly as you used to do when there was light but if the light comes back tada magic huh so light is very important for photography and not just lighting the position of thank you very much the position of the light is very, very, very important. How you place the subject in front of the light. Now, also, if I were unable to reflect light, as you would soon see, you would not be able to see me at all. You can hear my voice, but I am no longer reflecting light into the camera. So it would seem as if I have disappeared. But if I'm able to reflect light from my body back into the camera, voila, now you can see me again. So, uh, for recap, a camera is made up of three parts, aperture, lenses, and image sensor. So those are the three main parts of the camera. The aperture is a hole through which light enters the camera. The size, which is determined in what we call f-stop numbers. Now, how are f-stop numbers measured? It's very simple. They are inversely proportional in nature. The smaller the number, the bigger the hole. The bigger the number, the smaller the hole. Then you get to the lenses. Now lenses are what take light from the aperture and focuses them on the image sensor. The image sensor collects this light, converts it into electrical signals, and then forwards it to your SOC where image processing is done and then the image is then carried over to your screen. Uh, this is how cameras work. I hope uh, you understood so far what we've been trying to do. If you have any comments, please uh, leave them in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Jeffrey and I'll catch you in the next one.